Good afternoon, everybody. Today we are discussing about reprosthetic surgery. In this talking, the main learning outcomes is regarding about the principles for indications, advantage and disadvantage about the reprosthetic surgery. And there are various types of reprosthetic surgery and what are the cases suitable for the particular type of cases. The definition of preprosthetic surgery means surgical preparation of the remaining oral tissue after excision or loss of teeth to support the best prosthetic replacement. So we want to achieve the prosthetic replacement to remove the soft tissue or bony tissue. The main objective of preprosthetic surgery to create the proper inter arts relationship in the anthroposal or transverse and the vertical dimension to create alveolar process that as large as possible and the proper configuration to remove the bony and soft tissue protuberance or undercuts to create adequate palatal wall form to create proper positioning of tuberosity notching adequate attached carinite mucus in the primary danger bearing area to create adequate visceral length of the prosthetic extension to protect neurovascular bundle to create the adequate strength where mandible fracture may occur and also to create adequate bony support and attach soft tissue covering to facilitate the implant placement. These are the main objective for the pre-prosthetic surgery. So, how it's happened? It is mainly due to the bone loss. So, in the mantle, the bone loss is like a sequelae. Normally, the dentition time there is no bone loss. So when you're going for the multiple extraction in the old age, what we want the crustal part will be slightly reduced and it will reduce up to the neurovascular bundle. You can see the sequence. So what will happen normally the bone will be uh, normal healthy version is still less. And going to the age wise is become more sclerotic. So the main thing is happen the crustal region, the bone area will be so it will never affect on the lower part, border of the mandible the same thing is happen on the maxilla also maxilla it can be tied two types might be total maxillary resorption or anterior maxillary resorption so the classification of pre prosthetic surgery there are different types so i will Roughly, I'll explain what are the things. Main first one is the bony recounting process. It contains the single alveoloplasty, intercepted alveoloplasty, maxillary tuberosity reduction, removal of buccal exposure and excessive undercuts, lateral palate exposure, smile of herbs, ribs reduction, genital reduction, torre removal, maxillary, and mandibular. Correction of the soft tissue animals like a maxillary tuberosity, mandibular para reduction, lateral palate soft tissue excess and support a hypermobile tissue, inflammatory fibrous hypoplasy, inflammatory fibrous hypoplasy of the palate, label and lingual phrenectomy. Going for the soft tissue surgery on the mantle ribs, session, there are two types of vestibular procedure like a Cassandin's and class. Cassandin may be seen on based on the insertion of the lip mucus, insertion on the crystal ray that is class. Triumph position flap vestibular that is called lip switch procedure. Rich tissue soft tissue as skin grafting and mucosal grafting. Floor of the mouth extension by myeloid repository that is called the tonus, caldwell, and broad like that. Genial tubercle or genial closest reposition position that is Anderson procedure. Soft tissue surgery for the maxillary ridge extension that is submucal vestibular maxillary vestibular with the tissue grafting. Creation of post tuberosity hamla notch. Mandible like augmentation procedure like superior border augmentation, superior border augmentation with the online graft, inferior border augmentation, heterocephalic augmentation, guided bone regeneration and distraction goes to genesis. Maxillary the same like online grafting in lay, heterocephalic augmentation, sinus leaf that is important for the implant cases. Guided border regeneration and distraction goes to genesis. These are the main procedures. So first Normally, we know about what you mean by alveoloplasty. It is the recondoring of the alveolage after the accession of teeth. There are two types alveolectomy and alveolectomy. 
<clears throat> allelectomy means the removal of bone from the alveolus during alveoloblastic procedure. So we are cutting away with using a bone riser or a file. Allelectomy means cutting of the bone of the alveolus, but not to remove from the excision area. That is called allelectomy. Simplest form of alveolar excision consists of the compression of lateral walls of the soil after excision. So normally, what we'll do after excision, every time we are uh, told regarding when to compress the soil. So what we'll do, I mean, we can uh, recondure the shape of the crustal area. That is called a simple alveoloplasty procedure. Future, what we'll do, we'll put a crusting incision on the suppose if there will be any bone is procured after the extraction what we will do we will put a crusting incision on a uh, particular area we will raise the flap then we will after raising the floor we will assess where the bone is put so we will recondition the bone using with the bone ranger or bone file or using with the bar then after that we will palpate if there will be any uh, sharp margin so if sharp margin is not there then you go for irrigate with the Returning to the saline. After that, we will switch at the area. So, in this diagram, we can see uh, the crust incision will place. After that, we are raising the, uh, we will cut the uh, bony part, and after that, we will recondor the shape of the bone, and we will switch at uniform tension we used for the switcher. So going for a multiple extraction body with the alveolar region, some, sometimes from canine to canine area, there will be indent dental bone will be there. So we will incision in place, we will take it out the indent dental bone and recondoring the shape of the uh, indent dental bone and creating a uniform shape and after that counter check there will be any bony uh, spicule. If bony spicule will be there, you patient will be more painful and you sometimes it should be uh, dressed over after this extraction time. So we will reshape it using bone file or uh, uh, bird. After that we will switch up the area. So and one more thing is for uh, knife for the knife edge in knee dangerous. Most of the time we can see knee dangerous patients sometimes the lower crustal will be very sharp margins so what we'll do we'll put the crustal incision and recondor the crustal area using with the bond file and irrigate the area and suture with the continuous stroking suture next one is the dean's interceptor alveoloplastic procedure it's called alveotomy we are removing the bone it is normally indicated where the ridge is normal related to irregular condor and adequate height, but we present an anatomical at the depth of the labial crystal because of the configuration of the labial cortex. So the technique you see is mostly using with the bar, bone ranger, like that. So what will be the vertical cuts can be uh, placed on the other side and the distal socket of the facility in front of the labial alveolar plate using with the digital pressure. So the main advantage for this procedure is labial undercut can be reduced and minimum elevation of the periosteum. So the main disadvantage for this is result of reduction of with the width of the ridge for the implant placement is not possible for this type of case. So you can see in this diagram after accession of the teeth. There will be interdental bone will be there. So what we will do, we will cut that interdental bone uh, using with the mostly burr. After that, we will crush this area from the buccal side, not from the lingual or palatal side. We are crushing that buccal plate from the buccal side and recondor the shape and suit side. So we will never touch on the lingual or the palatal plate. So what will happen, uh, there will be uh, reduce the uh, width of the ridge. So the, the uh, implant placement will be little difficult. And the types of the alveolar procedure are 
deans, OPS, there are a lot of allergic procedure will be there. Sometimes we use uh, incision in space and only remove the crystal margin. Sometimes we are crushing the buckle plate. Sometimes we will reposition the crystal part also like that. The main thing after alloplasty, we are always using the continuous locking type of solution. So then only we get a uniform tension. Otherwise, what will happen? Some areas uh, will be more uh, inverted margins that will create a, a flabby uh, tissue will be there. So that will create one more surgical procedure will put up. So uniform tension will do for the multiple extension of alloplasty. Maxillary bone to residual reduction that uh, there are a lot of tuberosity uh, uh, procedures will do only when there will be the tuberosity will be oversized like that. That only thing is we want to cut that particular area where we need the sometimes the tuberosity reduction mostly happens on the buckle side so we will cut it off and creating a uniform shape to the opposite same like opposite side so the incision space from the crystal from molar to molar and <clears throat> if they need it on the both sides we will put molar to molar otherwise we will do only on the one side and we will cut it off the undercut area and creating a uniform shape and we suture the particular Area. The same thing sometimes as tuberosity will be uh, of size or something uh, is close to the palatal side also. We are creating this same thing. The only thing in this procedure we are reducing the undercuts. That's the most important. Then only prosthetic habit habitation will be replaced. <laughs> So, most of the time that uh, buckle uh, site there will be tuberosity exosis will be there in the mostly seen on the old age patients. Sometimes it alert also will be there. So, we will cut it off from the buckle site. We will put a rhomboidal incision or a tapestry incision in place and raise the flap and cut it off using a bone ranger and bone file. Next one is the myelohyd ridge reduction. Myelohyd ridge reduction means if you are going for a danger where there will be impeachment on the sharp myelohyd ridge that causes a discomfort and sharp shooting pain. So high muscle attachment will also dislodge of the danger also. So what we will do, we are giving a block and we will put incision on the crustal region. And the sharp margins we will reduce with the bond file or using with the bar. Next one is the palatal toric region. This is commonly seen in Malaysia. Uh, so what we'll do? Sometimes some people they will excess the suppose it's the oversized toric. No, we'll cut it off. Otherwise they can never go for a complete tension. In this mainly we are using with the Y incision and the most commonly uh, complication seen is accident performed to the nasal cavity, flap necrosis, hematoma on the palate. So what we will do, we are going for a Y incision on the palate region, we will reflect the flap to the both sides and the palatal tori will cut into multiple pieces and take it out and uh, create on the Roof of the bag in a uniform shape using with the uh, uh, bar or using with the file. And we will see that area with the uniform tension. The same thing we have noticed on the lingual tori. We have lingual tori, the crustal incision in place and cut it around the lingual tori with the uniform shape and switcher. This is mostly seen on the old age patients because they are going for the tinker. Otherwise going for a normal uh, uh, for the corn preparation or something like that then never go for the removal. Next 
next one is the corruption of the soft tissue analysis that is means brain activity brain activity procedure has uh, different day symbol excision is a plasty and also nowadays they commonly use lasers simple excision is nothing but on the maxillary we are using the uh, frenum and as uh, and as was using with the tear artery from the lower and upper part will anastomos and we we'll cut it out from the inner side not from the outside and it should become a diamond shape after excision of the frenum then after that what we'll do we'll switch it so other type procedure like is a plasty is a shape of is a incision is placed like a is and we'll rotate both the points the upper part goes to the lower part and lower part goes to the upper side so there will be no excising the soft tissue these are the commonly used techniques simple excision and is a plastic lasers there is nothing but we are remove the soft tissue using with the laser so both the simple the simple excision procedure and is a plastic there will be chances of bleeding will be there but for the going for the laser the chances of bleeding will be less the going for the lingual phrenectomy what we'll do there is a transverse sensation on the face of the phrenal attachment and adequate protection is submanual duct opening if suppose there will be chances of trauma to the submanual there will be uh, salivary duct spillage to the other parts so that will be leads to other complications and also we will preserve the lingual artery and lingual vein so we will transfer sensation and dissection will place and will turn layer by layer dissection will place and after that we will cut the excess of tissue and after that we will suture it next one is soft tissue to proceed direction so the firstly i told the first palatal toroid thing is that to posterior to proceed direction because that is a bony part soft tissue might be there will be for excessive overgrowth of soft tissue so excessive overgrowth will cut out the excessive soft tissue part from the toroidity or sometimes on the posterior region on the crystal region we cut it off and suture it always countercheck the opposite side is same on the other side the same procedure we go for the both sides if you main thing always using with the continuous locking switch otherwise there will be excessive or again chances the recurrence will be the same thing also so soft tissue reduction for the uh, entire crust of the maxilla so the same thing we'll do it will cut it off the soft tissue sometimes there will be tuberosity excessive tuberosity with the soft tissue we also remove the tuberosity with soft tissue remove these are the most commonly soft tissue techniques going for the vestibular plastic technique means rich augmentation but there are three types mainly the casanguins and class like secondary fillerization procedure and modified casanguin that is called a leap switch procedure casanguin procedure initially i told it starts from the incision space from the uh, lower lip re region in a part of the lower lip the incision is placed towards to the crustal region so the flap is raised and wherever they need means the incision is placed on the vestibule on the lower lip and is goes to the crustal below the crustal part means towards the lower uh, border of the mandible and reflect and this point is sutured to the lower part that means it should sutured to the periosteum we will never reflect the periosteum so there will be secondary epithelialization formation will be there and we some after this procedure normally we are using with the eugenol pack on this area 
class procedure to address the skull contraction of the lip class recommended for the western procedure which flap is particular of the lip rather than the alveolar process the raw surface is on the bone rather than the lip less contraction occurs on the wound granules and re-epithelization incision made at the junction of the free mucosa and the attached gingivite down to the periosteum and the supraperiosteal flap is reflected exposure of the bare bone as adversary and he might be delayed and the sequestration uh, might occur and also main thing dissection of the mandalis muscle down to the lower part of that will lead to avoid the chin drop that's commonly seen for this type of procedure and label switch it to the perusian and using with the horizontal mattress switcher so Cassandian mucosal periosteal flap from the inner aspect of the lower is used to increase the vestibular depth in the anterior mandible labial vestibule. Suppose mostly it uh, starts from the premolar to premolar and raw areas left on the lip side to be healed with the secondary induction and periosteum of the bone is kept intact. This is a Cassandian uh, technique, but in the class what we'll do the incision is placed on the crustal alloy crust to the vermilion border of the lip that you can see the incision placed on the crustal region and towards the vermilion border of the lip and superferiosteal dissection is placed to done to dissolve the vestibular depth and the edge of the mobilized flap is pushed to the vestibular depth that means it goes to the vestibular depth. and the flap is held in position as which will pass to the chin area and tight around the uh, upper catheter that means this one is switched to the lower uh, extra oral region to the chin region with using with the catheter place see the switch is placed from the flap and to uh, Connected to the periosteum and suture and place is the position. So, what will happen? There will be a rubber catheter will be placed on the extra oral region. In modified Cassandian's technique, what will happen? The incision is placed from the uh, label uh, lower lip region towards to the crustal region, and the periosteum also will excise from the bone and this part that towards to the label region and the label flap is towards to the body part that means it's a rotation technique means the perusion is towards to the lower lip region and the uh, vestibular lower lip part towards the you can see the periosteum towards the lower lip and this area that goes to the crustal uh, towards the lower part that's called a lip section it's, uh, it's like a rotation procedure and also we using a tension pan otherwise what will happen again uh, the same uh, recurrence of the uh, recurrence will be more In modified cathangians, it's called a transversal vestibular label mucosa by develop and extend the rejection to the reads from the initial lip incision, horizontal incision waits from the perusia, and the crystal reach and the vertical releasing incision is placed at each end. Periosteal flap is elevated and sent on the mucosal margin to the lip, it's like a rotation. Mucosal flap is then switched to the periosteal area and the depth of vestibule without tension. The advantage of this technique is that the periosteal covering on the lower lip diminishes. Only thing there is no any raw area. That's the most uh, uh, counterpart of lip switch per year. But raw area is there, but there will be less compared to the other procedure. And diminishes the likelihood of wound contraction of the lip. Next is tissue graft vestibular C. It is indicated for the inception bone on commission to the potential relapse of the secondary realization vestibular procedure. 
or when the vestibular depth is needed after which augmentation procedure. It has an advantage of reducing wound contraction and providing coverage to the denuded area. There are some uh, normally used uh, full thickness graft or split thickness graft will be used. Advantage of skin care is easy to obtain and uh, abundant supply. Open supply will be the not bearing tissue. This only is skin care to over the soft tissue rather than place over the bone will be contact which not present with the stem. Many is a carotid or non resilient or is a tracer for distance from a Mucosal graft. Buckle mucosa can be used. Palatal mucosa can be commonly used for the mucosal graft. Mostly, palatal graft for the tough resin tissue remains most and resin must get to pose a full thickness graft which undergoes less contraction than the partial thickness skin graft. Easily to obtain from the donor site. Indicated a severely atrophic mandible due to thickness of graft. This one is limited amount of the tissue available. Next one is the tonus procedure that is called the floor of mouth extended with the myelohyde preposition means the myelohyde muscle will be bigger. According to the ages, I already told the crescent region will be resolved. So what will happen if the chance of the uh, lingual side will be no any adequate depth. So we have to reposition the myelohyde muscle. So what we will do is uh, we will cut the myelohyde muscle. But this time of the myelohyde muscle will be there and reattach to the uh, lower border of the mandible on the lingual side and we will switch it to the extra oral using with the rubber catheter. So the crystallization is from the retromolar to the premolar region. Mucus is distinct to the supraperiosal plane. Myelohyde exposed and the incision close to the bone. Only thing is stump will be present. And suture pass to the lingual mucosa, muscle edges, and uh, anchor to the submandular skin percutaneously. And row whom will be replaced over the covered or split thickness skin graft. Next one is the genome tuberculosis excision and genoglossal reposition. The same thing on the lingual uh, side, genoglossal reposition to the lower area. You can see on this diagram, you will cut it off and reposition to the myelite area or genoplus muscle reposition to the lower quarter area. Next one is sub mucosal equivalency of all these techniques. We want to adequate depth creating on the buccal side, so incision is placed on the uh, linear. Incision we place and the underlying decision is placed. We want to adequate depth because we want to remove the uh, dissect the muscle. muscle. So, we are creating an adequate uh, muscle, uh, adequate depth on this buccal region, reposition of the uh, muscles so we can get adequate depth. So, this is a submucous vestibular procedure. See, mostly seen on the buccal side. Next one is the augmentation of the atrophic mandible bridge with the bone particle with the interpositional bone graft. Mainly, suppose if there will be no adequate height of the bone, so we will place just like a sandwich position in, in between, we cut from the uh, we will cut from the molar to molar the crystal uh, below around uh, uh, 3 mm or 5 mm height we will cut it off and placing in between there will be graft placement. That's only happen because uh, if the height is not there we can never go for the and get the uh, prosthetic rehabilitation. So that type of suppose if you going for the implant placement also we can be stored. The visor osteotomy is nothing but we will section the mandible into that means we will go cut into the buccal set, uh, buccal cortical plate, and the lingual plate like that. We will slide into two and we will slide it so we can increase the height of the crustal area. Means 
suppose the normal the height will be this much so if you cut into two and slide you now so you can get an adequate height and the uh, buckle set we are using the uh, graph material so there will be no any sharp margins on the buckle right and also sometimes it's going for uh, going for uh, uh, from the mostly for start from the molar to molar region so sometimes we are cutting now we can replace with the bone graft also placed these are the main uh, preparative procedures we are doing in the maxilla and manual so I will summarize normally the objective of the preparative surgery and what are the main things we are going for in this topic we want to study is first one is what are the alveoloplasty that means simple alveoloplasty uh, dense alveoloplasty procedures and what are the phrenectomy procedures that's commonly asked Lingual phrenectomy, label phrenectomy, what are the incisions, simple uh, excision procedure, is a plasty, laser, they are commonly used. After that, what are the uh, rich augmentation procedure that is called a Cassandian's class and a modified that is a lip switch procedure commonly used. How to do Cassandian's and class? What are the uh, <coughs> Other procedures like uh, palatal uh, torre removal, uh, what, uh, what type of incisions for the palatal torre removal, and coming to the last part, like uh, what are the uh, bone augmentation was like uh, bicep osteotomy. That is a commonly asked questions how to do. We are going to this, uh, what type of uh, the incision is placed. These are the commonly asked questions in this topic. Thank you.